Okay, we're ready to get started with Coach Meyer. Buddy, first question. Morning, Coach Meyer. Good morning. Uh, given the <clears throat> tough physical nature of the last two games you played in the regular season, Florida State and Alabama, was it good for you or bad for you in terms of the competition? And how is the injury situation, particularly Percy? Well, it's always good to play top flight uh, competition, uh, especially uh, when you're on a roll. And I felt uh, our team at that end of the year in that fourth quarter, really the, the game against FSU and then, uh, and then that Alabama game, as is, uh, that's as fine a football as I've been around. Uh, I was very proud of our team and our preparation and the way they played. Uh, with it comes risk, and the risk is if we had to play this game any earlier than January 8th, I don't think we'd have a chance to win just because of our injury situation. We lost four players in that Alabama game, and then Percy Harvin did not play. So, and Brandon Antoine did play. So, uh, the good thing is January 8th we should be fairly healthy. We should. Uh, I like the way our, our you know Percy Harvin had limited practice yesterday. Went full practice the day before. Today he'll do some stuff, but we are expecting him to be close to full speed. And Carl Johnson is going to be ready to go. Lewis Murphy and Keiston Moore, who actually had uh, uh, cartilage surgery right after the Alabama game, uh, will be ready to go as well. Urban, how are you? Uh, can you talk about the intangibles with your quarterback and Tim Tebow and, and maybe what you've seen in preparing for Sam Bradford, some of their either similarities or things that separate the two? Well, quarterback's a unique position, and that's uh, well, it, it, all eyes are on the quarterback, and not so much the country, but I mean all eyes. Uh, when the guy calls a play, when the guy on fourth down and one, he's the, he's the guy that has to make it go. So the ability for quarterback to get everyone else around and playing at a high level is what uh, we rank number one when you go out and recruit a quarterback and find a quarterback. So I hear about, you know, I'll hear something about Tim's throwing motion or the NFL's looking for... Uh, I sometimes get confused. Do they want a guy that's going to lead a team to win games? Then uh, I don't know if there's any better than, than Tim. Uh, Coach Stoops and I are friends, and, and he's often told me about Sam. And you can see that on film. And the one play that sticks out in my mind uh, with our, the quarterback we're playing is not uh, the throwing. It's that play on the four on the four yard line where he laid out to go try to score a touchdown. So uh, you have to be a leader. You have to be a tough. You have to show toughness, and you have to have the ability to raise the level of play of people around you. And our quarterback, I can't imagine there's a better one in America doing that. Urban, when, uh, when, you started, when you started your coaching career, did you set goals for yourself in terms of, I want to be an assistant, I want to be a coordinator, I want to be a head coach at a certain time? And uh, as a little bit of a follow-up, that, could you see yourself doing this job into your 70s, like a paternal or a Bowden? The last part of that question? Could, could you see yourself doing this job into your 70s, like a paternal or a Bowden? Um, you know, I was when I was uh, very young. My father and I went to a, a game, University of Cincinnati versus Wichita State. And I want to say I was eight, nine years old, and uh, at Nippert Stadium at the University of Cincinnati, and we're walking by the sideline, and, and I was I just remember this day. Remember looking at him and saying, "I want to be a coach." Watching what was going on on the sideline, and and um, to answer your question, I did not have goals set out by this time. I want to do this, 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 and this. No, I just want to. I want to coach football, and I knew I knew that at a very early age. Even when I was taking a baseball route for a while, I knew at some point I'd want to get back involved in football. Uh, there will be no chance I'll be doing this in my 70s or 80s. Zero, not. Urban, can you talk about your offensive line uh, this year? And and I mean, you, when you started the season, you really had four guys who weren't playing, starting on that offensive line the year before, and how they've been able to to melt, mesh together. I think this is a great storyline for young coaches and people who admire football. You keep hearing about Bradford and Tebow, and, and uh, what you're really going to see is probably the two best offensive lines in America going against each other, and there's, there's a reason for the success those quarterbacks have. Uh, it's not the scheme. Uh, Oklahoma runs a very up-tempo offense that's hard to defend, but it's hard to defend because they've got very good players and it starts up front. Uh, the quarterback has a very good ability to go from the first read to the second read to the third read, probably as good as I've ever seen a quarterback do. Uh, however, if you have a bad offense line, by the time he looks at the second read, he's getting hit. Uh, same thing with Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow has an excellent cast around him. Uh, our offense line, this is the best offense line I've been around. Uh, and I've been around some really good ones. This is, uh, they're, they're great people. They love the game of football. There's energy at practice. They're motivated. And uh, it's just a great, great study for, if you really study the game of football, all the quarterback stuff's real interesting. And 
and the receivers and everybody else, but it all starts with the offensive line. And this, we, we have our best offensive line. Uh, I haven't been in Florida more than four years, but it blows every other offensive line away. Uh, yeah, Urban, when you watch uh, Oklahoma's uh, offense on tape, how different is what they do from what you guys have seen this year? Well, on videotape, it's not as different because you don't see the TV copy and you don't see the, when you're, when you're involved in the, the tempo, what you see is a, a good group of players executing at a very high level. You don't understand that the, he has substitution limitations because of the tempo. You have the fatigue factor and you have the chaos factor where you, know, you like to get lined up. The positive is we've had three weeks to prepare and we've been operating at a very high level uh, of chaos on defense trying to get lined up and go. They, they create a lot of plays because teams are misaligned. The TCU is a perfect example. TCU is playing their tails off. And even the coach, Gary Patterson, made a comment that he screwed him up because he's actually talking to one, you know, when the play was snapped. So we have to get lined up and we have to go. Uh, but that's, that's a problem. But the, the personnel is a problem. You know, I, I'd like to play a team that does this with really bad players. That's not a problem. It's the factors are really good. Uh, Urban, um, coaches from USC, Utah, and Texas are, 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 are claiming that, that they should be, they're going to vote themselves number one, the coaches are, for in the national championship in, in that poll. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and, and their arguments for a national championship? Well, I, that's absolutely what they should do. Uh, yeah, I got news if uh, I'm representing the University of Florida and I'm an employee of the University of Florida and I represent my players, most of all, I'm going to fight like a dog to take care of them. And uh, I made a comment two years ago that the University of Florida belonged in a national championship game and then all of a sudden, boom, it was uh, Coach Myers out there. What was the term? Lobbying. lobbying. I love that term. So I was out there lobbying. I simply said that we belonged in the game. Uh, but I'm an employee of the University of Florida. More importantly, I love my players, represent my players. So if you don't really understand the whole mechanics, investment, and passion that these coaches have. If, you, if, if a coach would win a game, go 13-1 and one, or a Utah team, and not fight for their players, that's not a good coach. So, of course, they should do that. Urban, can you talk about Scott Loeffler? And he has a previous relationship with Tim. How important was that in the hiring process? I'm sorry? Uh, Scott Loeffler, can you talk about him? And, and he has a previous relationship with Tim. And, and how important was that in the hiring process? Um, it, was, it wasn't that important. Uh, it, the quality of coach is the number one thing. I, I would imagine that uh, you know, Tim is very comfortable with him. Uh, but we, we, uh, I talked to quite a few coaches. Um, at the NFL level and college level, and the University of Florida quarterback job is, it's not a hard to find people that want it. So uh, it was, I wanted to wait till after the game, but what happens is a guy like Scott starts getting a lot of job offers and we got to get going, and I certainly don't want to distract. That has nothing to do with this game. So uh, that's why we released it afterwards. So uh, very happy to have him part of our staff, and, and I'll address that more after the game. Coach, if you could address, again, uh, you mentioned you, well, there's no way you're going to be coaching in your 70s and 80s. Uh, is it the rigors of the game? Uh, obviously, you guys are very competitive. Is it just the nature of the beast now that uh, maybe you don't want to do the paternal thing? Well, I don't know if you'll ever see that again. You certainly won't see it at the same institution. People get tired of you, and they want to run you out of town, and you see that all the time. And um, you're, a, you're a missed field goal away from you know being a bum and everything else. That's just part of the deal. And... Uh, all coaches know that now. I mean, it's not like, boy, what happened to this guy? It's, what do you mean what happened? You get about two, three years to get your program going. And uh, so I, I don't see doing that. And, and uh, the wear and tear on coaching is, I imagine, it's like it's never been. With the recruiting 24-7, 12 months a year, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough lifestyle. Coach here in the, the back, whoever wins this game will have the first head coach to win two BCS national championships. What does that mean to you? Well, it's very humbling when you start thinking of all the great head coaches out there and, and uh, great coaching staffs. Um, other than that, I just worry about third down and six and make sure our punt team is ready to go. I don't... Coach, uh, talk about the uh, difficulties in, in dealing with Oklahoma's up-tempo offense and running so many plays at you. And what have you done? I'm sorry. To Talk about how There's a lot of noise right here, so I can't hear. Talk about how the uh, difficulty of dealing with Oklahoma's up-tempo offense and no huddle and the, the tempo that they run it, and what have you done in practice to try to get ready for that? Uh, we've, everything we've done is no huddle and up-tempo, so we're getting a multitude of plays. You look, they average over 80 plays a game compared to, I think, we average upper 50s or 60s with the clock rule and, and uh, 
but their intent was to run as many plays as they can. Uh, the biggest thing that's going to happen in this game is all great offenses, which we consider them a great offense, we consider the Gators a great offense, is if you allow them to start anywhere other than deep in their own territory, that's, that's not right. That's not, we can't have that happen. And it's turnovers and uh, coverage units. So when you start talking about their great offense, if you keep them pinned back and on a short, on a long field, uh, as I'm sure that's the feeling, of, that's really what the whole principle, the, the whole, um, what this game's all about is making a team drive the length of the field and not give them short ones. That's, that's what's going to be the difference in this game. Uh, Urban, could you just talk about uh, any hard and fast rules you might have in terms of advice that you give to underclassmen who want to come out? Uh, and if you get definitive feedback from the NFL that Tim Tebow will not be a first-round draft choice, would you use that as uh, to convince him to stay? Well, I, I use that myself. And, and when I'm asked that advice, uh, um, when I first got to Florida, there were people made decisions without. I'm never going to force my opinion on someone. Now I got the kind of team that, you know, coaches, players, you know, it's real close. When we first got there, it was like we, they, we, we, the coaches were the bad guys. We were the, you know, it's, we, we won't tell coach that we're talking to this agent and doing this. Now I have a, starting with guys like Reggie Nelson and, and those guys are open. They say, hey, this guy's calling me. This guy's doing, what do I do, coach? And that's like your real father. So it's really tremendous. The guys that will make decisions at Florida from here on out will make very fine decisions. And when I say fine, I don't know if it's the right one. Uh, it's going to be a decision based on education, you know, that they've talked to the right people. They've done their homework. They've done their research. It's not what some agent, it's not what some third uncle is going to tell them. It's going to be the right decisions. They'll be on the phone with guys like Bill Belichick. They'll be on the phones with John Gruden's of the world. And see uh, the, the general managers, uh, Jack Del Rio's guys that I have good relationships with. If they want to talk to those people, talk to them, and then make the right decision. But that's a family decision, and uh, so I know the guys that we have don't make the right decision. Would you convince him to stay? Would I convince them? Absolutely not. No, I'd, I'd put them on the phone with the right people, and lay it all on a piece of paper on a on a table, and have his mother, his father. And if he wants a brother there, but no one else. I mean, I, I don't want, uh, if someone wants their, you know, the, their advisor in there, then they're in the wrong place. Coach, would you, last year you talked about how you had some tough guys, but you didn't have a tough team. Would you talk about how this has evolved from last year into what you have called a tough team? Uh, personnel, maturity, and, uh, and I think our assistant coaches have done a great job, starting with Mickey Marotti, uh, developing toughness. We've recruited toughness. Uh, last year's team was not a tough team. Last year's team was uh, just not, not very tough. Um, our, t our team two years ago really turned out to be, you, know, you could tell on a fourth down to one against Ohio State on the 25 yard line, it showed us toughness. Uh, uh, this team uh, showed us toughness. And uh, this is a very, this is one of the toughest teams I've been around. Coach, what are your thoughts on an early signing date? Early signing date? Ooh. Um, third down and six against Oklahoma here in Kyle. I don't oh, I need some time to regroup on that one. Coach over here, for your kids who were there two years ago and are experiencing this again, do you rely on them to tell the younger kids who haven't experienced this yet what this is all about, what it means, and not to get too caught up in it and just to play your game? Not really, because we, I, I would draw upon it if we had a bunch of guys that played in that game. Our left tackle, Phil Troutwan, I believe, is the only starter. Uh, Tim Tebow played a critical role, so did Percy Harvin, but they weren't starters. And, you know, if I had to do that because of immaturity or because I was, had a team walking around and, and the hotel we're staying at is doing a tremendous job, we're not seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, problems in that hotel. So, no, we're, going, we're talking about the plan to win. We're talking about how we're going to execute and how we're going to win this game. I, I, don't, I would if I had to, but I don't feel like I've had to.